Hey, what's up? It's Dara, and I wanted to talk to you today because it is the four-week anniversary of getting my gender-affirming breast reduction surgery. Yay! Okay, so this is not going to be edited or with music or anything like that because um, I don't have time to do that today, but I really want to be sure this gets posted. All right, um, let me back up just a bit because I haven't updated in a couple of weeks. So let's talk about recovery first. Um, I would say in week three, so let's say I reached the third week of my recovery. By then I had a lot more of my range of motion um, available to me. So I was able to reach for things pretty much with no problem up and across whatever I needed to do. I was able to lift and carry things better. Um, I was able to hug people a little bit better, um, but not quite completely. It still kind of hurt a little bit if somebody didn't know that I had had surgery on my chest. I would say there was still a lot of sensitivity in my chest, so it was still, uh, it, there still was discomfort. It was noticeable. Like I would just be going about my day and I still could feel pretty constantly like, oh, there's stuff going on here. But I just kind of like to imagine that it was just my nerves were healing and coming alive or whatever that meant. Um, I did start getting a little more impatient that I wanted to be back to normal with everything in life. And so I know that's also a normal part of healing that you start feeling better, and but then everything isn't feeling quite better. Um, for instance, I did overexert myself one evening, like I went out on a date night with my wife and we went out and ate and had some drinks and stayed up late. And then the next day I was, I wasn't hungover. I didn't have that much to drink, but I was weary. I was really weary. And I had a holiday party to go to later that night. And I was just, everyone's like, how are you doing? And if it had been 24 hours earlier, I would have been, oh, I'm doing so good. Like moving along fine. But at that party, I was like, uh, I don't know. This is rough, but <laughs> it's just because I was overexerting myself beforehand. I would say this week, so leading into um, today would be four weeks that I got my surgery, that a few days ago I accidentally discovered that I could jog because I was at my gym and I left my headphones in the car. It was really, really cold outside. And so I was like jogging to my car to get the headphones and I noticed it didn't hurt anymore when I did that. Whereas just a few days earlier, I was running through Whole Foods, not really running, I was jogging through Whole Foods to get something that I forgot, of course. And I was like, oh, yo, too soon. And so I decided that I was still, I'm still alternating like when I either go on the treadmill or go outside, I'm walking mostly, but I'm still putting in now several minutes of jogging. And that's felt really good for several reasons. Um, for one, I have tried on and off throughout my life to jog. And because my chest was the size that it was, it just never really was something I would stick with. I just still felt too burdened. Um, and so I actually have, haven't been a jogger in my life, but it has just naturally felt like something I could really probably start doing. And I think it's true, especially with the last few days, I just would be walking and then like, I think I'm just gonna start jogging. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a nice little trot. I'm not um, ready for any kind of marathon, but it's a good start. I know a lot of people who've had um, gender affirming surgery where you don't only focus like on that one surgery or that one part of your body, like it's your whole being, your whole, you feel better all over yourself, inside and outside. You feel, um, you know, I'm not speaking for everybody, but I've had a lot of clients and myself feel like you're more connected to yourself. And then you have this desire to just treat yourself and your body better. So if you can go ahead and even start doing some of those things before surgery so that your recovery is easier, and then you can just ease on into continuing to increase these things in your life that you want to do to feel better and better and more connected to your body. I hadn't realized how disconnected I had been from my body because of the dysphoria I felt around my chest until after surgery. And now where I feel, um, I guess I'm moving away from recovery into like some more of the emotional stuff, but I feel more confident. And I feel confident in ways that I can't even quite explain. I feel more aligned 
with my true um, self, and of course that includes my gender identity of being non-binary, I feel more um, like what I see in the mirror reflects truly who I am. I feel more comfortable in the clothing I'm able to wear. I feel more comfortable in the energy that I have, my balance of my yin and yang, my masculine feminine energy. It's starting to make so much more sense to me. And it's really quite a nice balance and it's um, actually quite peaceful. And like I said, it's I'm finally getting in touch with a lot more confidence that I've been looking forward to having for so long. Uh, There's a lot of work to do both internally and externally. I know that for internally, I have also started to Um, get serious, more serious about my meditation practice. And starting in the new year, I'd like to explore yoga on a more serious level. Uh, I also want to get back to doing some weights because I know in the past I've lost, I'm not looking to lose weight, but I do need to, um, I want to tone up is what I want to do. And so I want to, you know, exchange um, fat for muscle and not, you know, I I don't, my goal isn't bulkiness or anything like that, but definitely toning, especially in my abdomen area. That is still something that is an issue. I'm really going to focus hard in the coming year on addressing that. So when you get one part of your body and you feel better about it, it does sort of accentuate other parts of your body that you're like, oh, that probably needs attention. Oh, just a couple more details that um, a few of you have asked about. What is it that I'm wearing right now for support? So there was a post-surgery binder that I call it a binder because that's what I wear. I don't wear bras um, that I wore. And I starting a little bit after week two, I got a second. It turns out it's, I think it was called a sports bra on Amazon. And I was wearing that at night just to have something so I could also wash the other one. And then that one was a little looser. So it just gave me a little chance to breathe a bit. And then um, I put, I had worn sports binders before my surgery as well. So this past week I decided to put on one of those just to see how that would feel. Cause the post-surgery binder, it's really good for post-surgery, but it's got like Velcro straps and they're really thick up here. It's just a little bit cumbersome. So my previous sports binder that I've worn for, or I've had this brand for probably uh, two and a half years, I put it on and it fits. um, I mean, it fits better. Like, you know, before I was kind of like, like spilling out of it, but I put it on and it felt really good. And so I've decided that after I'm fully healed, I'm still going to be wearing sports binders on a daily basis. Something else that's been interesting. I don't know for what surgeries, like if this happens with top surgery too, but there's this glue that the surgeon used um, to, to, I, I guess, keep the incisions closed. Um, maybe they use that instead of stitches, but it was purple. It is purple. And you're supposed to like start <laughs> trying to wash it off. I mean, you can keep it on, but it looks really purple on your chest. And, and it's like exactly where your cuts are. And so I've been, I finally have decided to take the plunge and start using a washcloth to like remove that purple glue. Um, I was kind of scared to do it at first because I thought I would open my wounds up, but it's been, you know, four weeks. And so it turns out it's okay. So the purple glue is coming off and now I can um, see a little bit better what's going on. So that's been interesting. So I thought I'd mention that. Um, Yeah, I think that's it for my four week update. And uh, thank you again so much for everybody who has been wishing me well and asking me how I'm doing. There's been a lot of you online asking me about that. There's been a lot of people I've seen in person um, where I live here in Colorado. It just really touches me that so many people are paying attention to this. And um, like I've said before, I feel like this has been a big part of why my healing has gone so well because I feel so supported and so encouraged. And I'm glad that a lot of you maybe are learning from my experience, whether you are trans or, you know, I've had a lot of um, cisgender females letting me know that this has really gotten them thinking about moving forward um, with a breast reduction surgery as well. So I know know this kind of thing's on the mind of a lot of folks. Thanks for uh, sticking through my update. Um, Go ahead and and, uh, sign off so I can post this. Talk to you next time.